Welcome back to another episode of Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness, episode 125, if you're keeping track at home. Just a brief reminder that you can support the show by becoming a subscriber patron on Patreon. Some generous souls have joined, and I'm forever grateful. But more assistance would be an excellent achievement. Exclusive content is posted every week. Link is below. Let's venture back to February 10th, 1996 for a scantily clad dumb birthday game. And because of this, the title is Lingerie Radio. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Our players, the dazed and tired Eddie LeClaire, producing and playing in studio. Jack Hart, back from a relaxing couple of days off. Denise, wearing her feather boa and celebrating her birthday. Mary and Peabody, armed and, dare I say, legged with some lingerie knowledge. The wheezy Jack from Braintree and Chris in Worcester with some questions. Birthdays, Robert Wagner, Mark Spitz, Leontine Price, Roberta Flack, Donovan, Lenny Dykstra, and Laura Dern. And we get a date in history. In what year did Death of a Salesman open on Broadway? The tape switches to side B, and Chris from the game talks a little bit more about Death of a Salesman. We pick up after the news with about eight minutes of Bob Hernandez playing one of his games. The callers for that were Manny, Anne, George, Sam, Fred, John, Beth or no Beth, Spencer, and Scott. Other naughtiness. Jack's nightly outfit is described. Actuarial tables. Norm describes his nighttime ensemble, and Jack makes a suggestion that Norm is excited about and will be adding. Court TV. Fred Graham and his dirty jokes. The Asthma Inhaler Club. Theodore Asthma Pills, Plunging Necklines, and Dainty Voices, Drum Rolls, and the Native Dances of Chagra, Falling on Your Spits, Water Forming on Your Condenser Tubes, you know, you should probably see a doctor about that, Pietro Mascagni, Norm Pours His Soul Out, Open Doodahs, Library Finds, The Hotel Ovary, uh, I'm sorry, I mean Avery, Tommy Carr and his Men of Melody, Norm with a great story from his WMEX days, Tony David at the organ live from the Silver Dollar Bar, and cameo appearances by Tonto, The Lone Ranger, Jack Benny, and an extremely elderly Alex Trebek from Jeopardy in the year 2100. Episode 125, Lingerie Radio, brings its silky tones to your ears in three, two, and one. And stuff. We're having, well, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> I mean, if you if you haven't got it now, just forget it. Uh, you'll you'll get the idea as we go along. We'll have an interesting panel. Of course, one of the members of the panel is the producer of this program, Ed Leclaire. So now, how does that go? We 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 get people and then guess their birthday. We, we guess yeah. How old? No, I guess no. I guess because today is their birthday. I, oh, okay. I phrase that kind of badly, but uh, we guess how old they are. Ah, uh, is that what that you would say? Well, I can never heard that old thing before. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? You've been sitting there trying to wonder why you had that gazed kind of uh, <laughs> a look of total, total nothingness on your face as you look. Now you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, the trouble is, his uh, his his eyelids are drooping and he's stifling a yawn. That's what happens when a producer is <laughs> doing this program for more than three minutes. We also have, of course, we have Jack Hart, who I have gotten to talk to for a while. Yeah. Was the last week the week you were on vacation, or was that the week before? I was I was on vacation on that Monday that you were in. Oh, just that one night. Yeah, and uh, oh. but that was here last week. Yeah. You weren't on vacation the whole week. No, I just had a couple of days left over from last year that I had to get rid of, and um, so I took them, and uh, me and my honey just kind of relaxed for a couple of days. Oh, that's kind of nice. So I like the way you phrase it, just so casually. We had a we had some I had some days uh, vacation days that I had to get rid of. Oh I, yeah, from last year. No, I realized that, but saying using the phrase "getting rid of" like vacation days is like they don't really count, and you had to do it. It's like you know, like you have to get your teeth cleaned or a cavity filled or a root canal. You know, the fact of the matter is, they twisted my arm. They made me wear pajamas for several days and twisted my arm. They said, "You sit there and do nothing for yeah. several days." Is that is that the uh, uh, that the jammies with the feet and the little hatch in the back and a little hatch in the back, and I yeah, had on a yeah. little little plaid bathrobe, and a 
a little kind of funny little knitted cap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we ought to... We ought to send pictures of you out in that in that, in that costume. Not costume, because that's your regular nighttime wear. Sure. And I'm wearing uh, it now. Yeah. You're wearing it now. Yeah. yeah. See, it, it does... I, I, I don't know whether you've realized this or not, but broadcasting is kind of an image thing. Mm, yeah, oh. e even if you're a schmucky kind of person, you shouldn't give the image of that. You know, you should... So people <laughs> expecting you to be a big time traffic person when you know on that deep voice of yours you say, "A traffic street is a five car pile up and it's a slippery and black ice and boy yikes and especially building up on the exits to highways and oh you see see, well, see when the, when they try to when what the, they're thinking boy here's a guy who knows everything he's an authoritative grown up person then they see you in your little jammies with the feet in the hatch and the little funny hat. <laughs> And the little bunny rabbits, you know, on the on the on the jammies. Oh well, you see what what I didn't uh, tell you was that I'm I've got this on while I'm getting ready to change into my into my uh, button down shirt, open mm -hmm. at the neck with my loosened tie and the sleeves rolled, and um, and and you and you have just a little bit of chest where you've got some hair pasted on. Yes, because because absolutely you don't have any of your own, and that's always kind of manly. Yes, and, <laughs> and I'm sitting here just just pouring through uh, through through all sorts of actuarial tables and uh, and statistics to to and, and, and calling and, and studying making, those maps, studying those mm -hmm. maps to find out exactly where the traffic is. So <laughs> this is just my interim outfit, <laughs> the jammies. Yeah, I see. It's so I can relax during the birthday game. <laughs> Myself personally, because I'm terribly manly and so sure of myself of my machismo, I wear a lady's night shirt to bed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Preferably black silk. I just, I don't know, it just drives me. Just makes me feel so good. <laughs> wow, do you have the garters? Hey, that's not a bad idea. I knew there was something <laughs> missing. I might get those too, yeah. Little little high heel, you know, those pumps like they used to wear in the old movies. <laughs> you know, oh, uh, you know. With the little furry thing around the front. That's right. I couldn't yeah. think of what they call. They probably mules, a name for it? that. Yeah, mules. mules. That's right, mules. And the little furry thing. I was trying to. That, that probably has a name. It's probably called a furry thing. Uh, a uh, a, a uh, maybe tarsal boa. A tarsal boa. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, a furry. Furry isn't that a tassel kind of boa thing. Yes, that's a snake, though, isn't it? A tassel boa. I was out at the zoo. They had a couple of them. Uh, they, <laughs> there is a boa constrictor. Oh, yeah. See. You came to the right place to say something like that. But you they know? don't have see? feathers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But, but but boas also are what women wear around their necks and stuff, like instead of stoles. Yeah. Or oh, it is kind of a stole, I suppose. Hmm. Do, you, do we have any idea what we're talking about? <laughs> No, but thank you for explaining. <laughs> okay. Then the, we're going to introduce you to the rest of the panel members oh. here. I seem to be having trouble putting words together. It's probably why I never became like a lawyer, and I only became a broadcaster. Because <laughs> <laughs> language, as you know, especially the English language, is my third language. <laughs> and the other two, I don't know that them too well either. <laughs> anyway, hi, Denise. Hello, Norm. You think this is, we're getting off to kind of a silly start. I can't understand that. Yeah, but I love it. I have a feather boa. Ooh. Do you? Oh, yeah. oh, hold on a minute while I fantasize. Ooh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have those, and I have those slippers with the feathers on them, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you? And Denise is a lawyer. Did you know yeah. that? See, that's why I, 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 I wear that outfit to court. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Come in with your boa, your, your feather boa, and then the, uh, the little, uh, what, do you, what do you call those? Uh, those little mules. The mules, yeah, the little mule. <laughs> And uh, and I can lend you my black silk uh, <laughs> a ladies' nightgown. <laughs> All the uh, well, the judges will think. Yeah, uh, unless it's unless it's uh, is there a is there a judge, a uh, Goldman, a woman? Judge Goldman. That's... I don't know. I just what I was what I was thinking of is you know as long as it's not a woman judge, yeah. you may have lost the case already. If you look up there, it's a woman looking at you, but a guy you want it. That's true. <laughs> Plus. Court TV will can hardly wait to get a little sex on their on their program. Oh, this is true. Fred Fred Graham, uh, you know, tries to throw in some dirty jokes every now and then, but he, you know, Fred Graham he's the, the narrator. He used to be with CBS when I worked with yeah. WEI. They were CBS station. 
And Fred, is, I think, is excellent. He would come on and do all the Supreme Court decisions and things. So he's a lawyer and, and all that. And so the court TV channel is just ideal for him. He's so dignified and knowledgeable. Yes. Maybe he'd like to borrow my black nightgown. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, see about that. And then you guys can all go to Jacques and Bay Village. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's right. I wanted to. Maybe I can join. What's what's the guy's name? The uh, he calls he calls every now and then. He's a nice man. He was out for a long time, and he's the oldest uh, female impersonator in the business. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I know yeah. who you mean, and I, I I forget his name. Oh, uh, it's yeah. awful not to think of his name. He's uh, it'll, maybe it'll come to to, to one or of maybe us. he'll call. <laughs> maybe he will call. He yeah. might be listening right this moment. Well, I hope so. But he just went back to work about three or four weeks ago. He's He's been ill, but he's okay now. Oh. Oh. Well, as okay as you can be in being a female <laughs> person. Bill and I have always <laughs> wanted to play Taurus there. We, we wandered into a similar club in New York one time because they had this great piano bar going. And after we left, uh, Bill said, uh, I, I, I forget exactly how the conversation came up, but my comment to him was, Oh, so those women at the bar weren't women, huh? And you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Mary in the Peabody. Hello, Mary. Hello, Norman. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining yeah. our happy group, our happy little troop. They're Marabou feather slippers. Pardon me? Marabou's Ma Oh, they call Marabou's? The ones yeah. that are on the slipper. Oh, I see. Oh, a, oh, 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 the the puffy the puffy thing is that's called a marabou. Yeah. You're probably the only person <laughs> in this entire area who knows that. I don't know if I know if anything you need to know about lingerie, Norma. <laughs> wow! Oh, there's so there's so much I want to know. Norma, I, I know it. I don't. I don't know where to begin, but I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> my breathing has become... Hold on while I use another one of my prevental inhalers. I think I'm getting an asthma attack. <laughs> That's always difficult when you're in the throes of lovemaking. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> hold on, let me get my... Yeah, yeah, my, my, uh, my tubes to my lungs there, they seem to be blocked. Hold on while I take a puff of prevental. <laughs> and if you can wait about three more minutes, I do another little shot with Vanseril. <laughs> Anybody who's got asthma or anything knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm okay now. I can talk about lingerie and, and I can. I'm breathing okay. It's better than the image that I had of what's it, Jack? Was that his name? Oh, Jack Hart. Oh, that scared me. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Jack. Oh, you mean with, with his job, with his yeah. jammies, with a little hatch and the and the little feet. You're relaxing at home on your vacation days with your to be wife or show to your wife and that's what you chose to wear um we yeah she well, she wears a lumberjack shirt <laughs> well you know you, you you never know until you try them <laughs> <laughs> mary you're wonderful let's go to jack uh, uh in uh see jack and braintree hi jack i know i'm how are you do you care to join this group and become part of our <laughs> birthday so. game oh dumb birthday game panel i'm good i'm glad to hear that do you have any uh Eccentricities like the rest of us seem to have. Anything? Well, I have asthma. You have <laughs> asthma? Well, that's an eccentricity for you. Oh. I know Vantro, I know Cavento, I know Ventolin. You know Theodore? The, the, no, the, the, no, no, I, no, people think I'm making a joke. No, that's the name of a it pill. Is. It's spelled T H E O dash D U R, Theodore. Uh, uh, so do you, do you take uh, you take those uh, inhalers that I'm talking yeah. about? Take them all the time. It's kind of funny, you know. Sometimes I give a, I give a talk, and I don't like to take a puff when I'm talking with people. But sometimes, you know, after about an hour and a half, and if I've forgotten to take it the f few hours before that, yeah. I sort of turn my back on the audience and try to take a puff quickly. But yeah. you have to you have to do it. You have to t hold it in for about a minute or as long as you can, so it can do its work. And then I turn around and I'm you know and I'm kind of a you know embarrassed by. It. And other people, and last time I did it, about five or six other people in the audience took out their little yellow prevental <laughs> tubes and, and held it up in the ears like we're all members of the same club. <laughs> <laughs> well, all those of you who use prevental, step to the front. It's solidarity. What's that, please? It's solidarity. Okay. Well, you know, those who wear lingerie. <laughs> and and use prevental. They're they're my kind of people. <laughs> and where 
little jammies with the feet. <laughs> this Chris, who's in uh, in Worcester. Hi, Chris. Good evening, Norm. I have a question. Please. I'm fascinated with Jack's jammies, but what I want to wow. know is how deep is the plunge on your black negligee? <laughs> <laughs> Just enough to tease you crazy. <laughs> oh, you're talking to me. You're talking to Mary. You're talking to Mary, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm talking to Norm. <laughs> oh, you are, are you? Yeah. Okay. Norm, you're showing a little clovage there. <laughs> yeah. He has a jam. Yeah, this is where I pasted on the phony hair. Just so you know, so you can see. Just a little, little make chest you, wig. A little you're chest wig. You're not just yeah. you're a customer. <laughs> what did say that again? I said you're not just the owner; you're a customer. Oh, that's right too. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a client. That's right. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to play the dumb birthday game, don't you? And not a moment too soon. Okay, I will tell you who was born on this day, and of course, the idea is for you to tell me how old you think they are. We'll start with Robert Wagner, of course, married to Natalie Wood, and uh, I don't know whether he's married now or not. But he's been on a million uh, TV shows. Heart to Heart mm -hmm. is the one with the... Uh, what's the name of the woman on that? The, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Powers. Powers. Stephanie Powers, that's right. It, it takes a thief. He's been on a lot of things. Uh, he was born on this day, February 10th, at, in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, let's let's see if you know how old he might be. What do you think, Denise? Robert Wagner. Well, I know that he is older than I am. Well, who isn't? Yeah. Well, oh, Norm, you're so sweet. Uh, well, my calendar just turned another year. I mean, today is my birthday. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday, yeah. of course. February 10th yeah. is your birthday and Robert Wagner's birthday. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'll say he has, a few, he has definitely a few years on me. I'll say he's 66. 66. Okay, and Mary? No, I'm fantasizing about you and <laughs> the way your lips are forming as you tell me you? Robert Wagner's birthday. <laughs> I, I think he's uh, 57. 57 or 67? I'm oh, sorry, say that again? 5'7". Oh, 5'7". Okay. You have such a dainty little voice. Oh. oh it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I could have a dainty voice if I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the dainty voice store. And they had a couple of dainty voices left over. <laughs> <laughs> they also had a lot of manly ones, so I've stocked up with all of them. Anyway, Jack, what do you think? How old is uh, Robert Wagner? Robert Wagner. I'm just trying to think. He uh, he was in a movie with Spencer Tracy. That had to have been in the 50s. Couldn't have been in the 60s. Who could it have been? <laughs> um... <laughs> And uh, let's see, so that would make him uh, at least like 40 years ago, 60, 67. 67, says uh, Jack Hart, and Jack from Braintree, oh, who actually I was, I was calling for when I said Jack, I oh, meant, that's what I thought. But, it's, but, I said, but I said Jack, so we, uh, since there are two, you have to differentiate. You'll be Jack, you'll be Jack Braintree, and he'll be Jack Hart. Okay. And I'll be... Right back. Yeah, I'll be the uh, <laughs> Wizard of Oz Scarecrow or something. Anyway, what do you think, Jack? I'll say 63. 63. Okay, Chris? Uh, let's try 65. 65, okay. And what do you think, Ed? 64. Okay, here's the answer coming now, and uh, this is, again, the exciting right. part of the pro the moment of, of the contest. Yeah, Drum roll. Let me see. Hold on a minute. Keep talking. Okay. No dancing, Norm. <laughs> oh yeah. That's it. Jack did the song. No, that's when I. That's when I grease my body, put on my loincloth, and and and, uh, and sandals. That's that kind of music I dance to. <laughs> anyway. Clog dancing. What's that? Clog dancing. No, not clog dancing. Heavens, no. <laughs> Nothing erotic about clog dancing. Well, this is the native dance of Chagra, it? isn't it? This is the native dance of, yes, of well, of that area. Yes. It's uh, like it's like the Rite of Spring, huh, Noah? That's right. Yeah. That's right. The, those on Spring Peepers all indicate, well, that's a whole other thing. We won't get into that. But you you, you hit it right on the uh, nose that Denise is 66. Yeah, exactly 66. How about Mark Spitz? 
That sounds like another one of those. <laughs> yeah, how far? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sounds like one of those uh, Lone Ranger jokes. <clears throat> oh, Tonto, how come, uh, how come Mark keeps drooling like he does? Uh, when does that stuff come out? Anyway, <clears throat> Mark Spitz. Okay. <laughs> that's a terrible name. He must have. That's probably why he won so many gold medals. He's trying to overcome that terrible name of his. Mm -hmm. He was so angry at all those children who mucked him as a child. He just kept swimming like the dickens, yeah, seeing their faces. Right? Wrong. That's, that's right. right. And you can't see spitting in the, in the water. That's true. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you were a runner and you kept spitting all the way around like the... Uh, you could slip and fall. You could slip mm -hmm. and fall on your own spits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There must be something about a pig, too, on a Spitz that we can make into a hilarious <laughs> bit of humor here. But anyway, Mark Spitz, um, let's see what, what I can tell you about him. You don't already know it because he's an Olympic gold medalist swimmer. Did he win, what, about eight, eight seven, to seven. seven, seven gold medals? I have hmm. a Mark Spitz toaster in my bedroom. Oh, really? <laughs> a Mark Spitz toaster? No, no. <laughs> no, I think she said poster. A but toaster. Oh, poster. Yeah, makes <laughs> a Mark Spitz toast. <laughs> okay, anyway, he was born in Modesta, California. Mm -hmm. That's no kind of a clue at all. I realize that. But I'm going to ask you first then, Mary, since you have the Mark Spitz poster, how old do you think he is today? Uh, 51. 51. Okay, and Chris, what do you think? Uh, I'd say probably 40, 45. Forty-five, okay. And the Jack Braintree? Uh, I'll say he's also forty-five. And what do you think of Jack Hart? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, folks, the trouble is in your set. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a man moaning. It's really not. It's just we're having trouble with a condenser tube. <laughs> I don't even know what a condenser tube is. I don't know, they but the water forming yeah, on it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't suppose they even make condenser tubes that are any kind of tubes, do they? I don't. They do make them because, uh, like, musicians want them in amplifiers and stuff. Gives it that sort of warm, mellow sound. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's very good. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, 43. 43 for Mark Spitz. Denise? Uh, I'll try 47. And what did you try, Ed? Uh, 40, I'll go between 45 and 47, so 46. 46 is exactly right. Ooh, wow. Ooh, yeah, right. 46 is right. Okay. Hoo-wee. As we had, uh, we had three people who were within a year of it. I thought we were going to have a lot of winners that time. Leontine Price, the, uh, the opera singer, born in uh, Laurel, Mississippi, um, Known for many, many versions of a lot of things, including Vita Mezzo from the Café di Rio Rusticana by Pietro Mascagni. Ah, uh, one of my favorites. No, I think that's an instrumental, but I just wanted to say it. <laughs> you can say that so well. I love to say that. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Leontine Price. Uh, let's start with you, Chris. What do you think? How old is she today? January, uh, February 10th. Uh, 64. Uh, say that again. 64. 64. Okay. And uh, Ed? 59. 59. Okay. And uh, Jack? Jack Braintree? Uh, I'll say 56. Okay, what do you think, Jack Hart? Leontine Price. Leontine Price. Leontine Price. Leontine Price. Hmm. Leontine. Leontine Price. Yes. Leontine Price. <clears throat> yes. So, <laughs> um, I think we've established, <laughs> a, we've established the name. Now we can figure out <laughs> an age. Oh. Um, I'll say she's got to be uh, 54. 54. Okay. And uh, Mary? Um, 58. Mary says 58. Uh, Denise? Um, she, by the way, I just want to comment, I told her to do some crossover jazz stuff, and she really swings. Does she? Yeah, hmm. which is unusual, because 
Kiri Takanawa did one also, and she was dull. That would be a hip-sounded album. Yeah. Liam Dean Swings. Yeah, she swings. Mm -hmm. I'll say 67. 67 is the closest. She's 69. Mm. And so Denise said 67. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Everybody guessed younger than she uh, is. That's because she swings. That's because she right. swings. That's right. That's yep. right. Old people don't swing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just hang there. <laughs> Got a limp. Got a limp you know. Feet just hanging out, the toes hanging below. Uh, uh, Roberta Flack, also a great jazz singer, born at Black Mountain, North Carolina. I would have given anything to be born someplace romantic like that, Black Mountain, North Carolina. Mm. I would have I always wanted to be to be born like in oh maybe uh, P.S. South Dakota would be nice. Well, anyway, I, I I don't know why I held up the whole program to pour my soul out to you, and you don't even appreciate it. Forget the whole thing. Okay? Well, we were all sitting here thinking to ourselves, ah, uh, Pierre, <laughs> oh, Tonto. How come Roberta hangs around the public relations office so much? <laughs> Roberta Flack. Oh, it's kind of kind of an in joke there. <laughs> Anyway, let's start with you, Jack Hart. What do you think? Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack. Roberta. Sounds like the, the, the old Johnny Carson thing. <laughs> oh, Johnny <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. And Roberta what Flack. is a giblet, a giblet, and a mimlet? Oh. Except that doesn't make any sense oh. in this case, but that would be sort of the kind of yeah. rhythm of, of the answer. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Zippa de doo What do you know, must Marcello Mastriano when his doo is open? Um, um, I don't even understand that. It sounds funny. <laughs> well, that insane. was one lot. That was that one sounded that I remember that there was just one that I remember him doing when he did that bit. Um, but Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack. Yes, that's what we're talking uh, about. Roberta Flack. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Okay, and Ed, what do you think? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Chris, what do you say? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. What was that? What was, she's done a, a few songs Killing that have been very softly popular. Was her biggest song. Uh, say that again. Killing me softly. Yes, yeah, so Killing me softly with his song. song. With and his you know song. Who that's about? Or huh? Are they thinking it's about? Who? It's Mick Jagger. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. right. Oh. And then she she did a song with a with a, a male vocalist that was kind of popular. Oh yeah, um, I have her album. I still owe it to the library. Actually, <laughs> 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 I went to town library when I was like twelve years old. I don't think I ever returned it. You I'm still have a lot. They're going to come after me now. <laughs> well, now that you've given yourself up on the air, maybe oh, no. they'll show you mercy. Yes, they don't have turntables anymore, so it's obsolete anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Jack Braintree, what do you think? How old is Roberta Flack? Meh. Let me see. What did you say, meh? I said, let me see. Oh, I see. I thought he said meh, too. Yeah, I thought he said, <laughs> thought it sounded like that, didn't it? Sound <laughs> lim in imitating Bob Bob Black Sheep, something like that. <laughs> a, a little lamb, something. <laughs> Bob Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the woman. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, Just a bit of something else. 55. 55. Okay. Mary? No, I think she's about 48. 48. Okay. Denise? 53. Okay. Uh, actually, she is 57. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, wow. So that means Jack Braintree and uh, Ed LeClaire... Both, uh, both, oh. in, both said 55, and they were the closest. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so running through our scores, Denise and Ed both have two apiece, and uh, Jack has one. That's Jack Braintree. As and we Chris go. is just here for kicks. What's that, please? Uh, it's a Chris is just here for kicks. Well, no, I've married I and Peabody, and, the, and Jack Hart has the, No, they you have nothing. 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 All the other... Only half the half the panel has scored, so you're you're not in, 
You know what I'm saying. <laughs> You've been looking into my personal life. It's all your fault, Norman. Yeah, with no the <laughs> I remember, it's kind of funny how things have changed. I remember one time reading a, a, on the news or something, a, a medical story about this organism that was discovered by something or other. And I said, orgasm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and back then, it seemed hilariously funny, embarrassing, you know. It was like a whole station was ready to go off the air with that. But uh, it, was, it was, was really a simple mistake, although I must say that when we used to broadcast from the, um, one of the rooms in the, the, the Hotel Avery, we would sometimes say the hotel over and pretend it was a mistake. <laughs> and at, at that time, it was not. The only, time, the only time we could get a little bit kind of, you know, a little off the wall. Anyway, today's also the, uh, the Cameo Room. That was the Cameo Room of the Hotel Avery. Tommy Carr and his Men of Melody. What a, what a group. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were fantastic, though, really, yeah. in all honesty. Out of three notes, if they could hit one, almost in tune, <laughs> we would, we, everything would stop and we'd cheer and, and order a round of beer. <laughs> I think they played at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> they probably, if you remember them, I mean, you would certainly remember them. I think if if, if they did, I remember one time we had to, we you know, used to have these you know these telephone lines that would go out to these places we call them remotes when they were did not originate in the studio itself, and uh, we had we, there was a technical problem we couldn't get the program on the air. I say we, I happened to be there at the time. And I couldn't get the program on the air with everything going right, but they couldn't get the program on the air. So the and the, the announcer went ahead with announcing the program. Anyway, it was on 7.30 each night on WMEX. I forget who the announcer was. I mean, it might have been a guy named Irving Wormont. Anyway, the opening is from the camera room of the Hotel Avery, the music of Tommy Carr and his Men of Melody. Then they would go into the theme song. Mm -hmm. And music for your listening and dining and dancing and fooling around pleasure, and on and on like that. And then the theme would end, and the announcer would say, and now here's your host, the man who conducts this wonderful group, or whatever he said, Tommy Carr. That would normally be it. But he knew he was not on the air because we were having technical problems, but they went ahead with it anyway, and he went through a line of obscenities. <laughs> he said, Here he is, probably one of the worst cockamamie musicians only he was substituting instead of that all, all awful language and and again this is the prudish era remember you know you couldn't say damn on the air that and and tommy carr's going crazy he's turning nine shades of red and he doesn't know what to do and he's and he's one of these very polite thank you very much sir. now we'd like to play first of all for you the Ravel's Valero, the dance version. Oh you know, whatever it was, he'd be very polite. So, but this guy is not going to stop talking. You know, he's going on and on and on. It's probably the worst. You know, if you, it should be down in the toilet someplace. This whole bad. It, anyway, and then and then Tommy Carr finally found out. I guess the guy couldn't keep it up without giggling a lot and said. You know, told him, you're not on the air anyway. We're having technical problems. <laughs> and so Tommy Carr chased him all over the hotel over there <laughs> with his baton ready to stick it up as you know where. And, uh, Did Tommy play an instrument? <laughs> yeah. I, I mentioned Carr's name on the air a million times. I wondered if he may, may not be alive anymore. I don't know. Did he play an instrument, Norm? Uh, yeah, he played, I think he played guitar. There was a vibes player and a bass player, and then maybe a drum drummer, maybe because it was a four-piece group. That seemed to be about the personnel kind of stuff, and it was it was really <laughs> anyway. Every night at seven thirty, one of us would get assigned to going there, uh, and that was and at eight o'clock we'd go to the old Boston Arena, which is now the Northeast University place. You know mm -hmm. the arena. Uh -huh. What is that called? Or something? Oh. Northeastern University Arena. No, it hasn't. It does have. It does have another name, and we oh. would do wrestling bouts from there. It's like the Terrier Dome or something like that. There's yeah, the Terrier that's something. A, yeah, it wouldn't be or Terrier, of course. That, no. That's Husky. BU. I'm sorry, yeah, Husky something. Husky, maybe the Husky mm. Dome. Husky Dome, but it's the same same place. Yeah, it sounds like a yeah. dessert. It does. Yeah, yeah, and 
I'm a chocolate yeah. husky dome. Yeah, yeah. We'd, and we'd do wrestling bouts from there. Hmm. I'm not even talking about the 6.30 one, which was from Silver Dollar Bar, which yeah. was Tony David at the organ. That was our big band. Mm -hmm. And I sitting there playing the organ. Anyway, Donovan, uh, as today is his birthday, the singer songwriter. Oh, Donovan. Oh. Donovan, his name, Donovan P. Leitch, L-E-I-T-C-H. Do you, you don't know the songs that... Uh, Mellow Yellow. Mellow Yellow is yeah, it. Atlanta. Uh, what's that? Atlanta. Atlanta. A little... Yeah, was he? Songs. He was big in the seventies, primarily. Was it? Is, is he still performing now? His early seventies. Yeah, his son is, I believe. You know, I think he's got an album coming out. He does have a new. He hasn't done anything in a long time, but he's got a new album that's going to be coming out soon. Mm. And mm -hmm. and I'm I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and I, I could swear that his son is a, is a musician also. Yeah, he was born in Glasgow, Scotland. Mm. Donovan. Okay, let's start with, uh, let's see, well, let's start with you, Mary. How old do you think Donovan is? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you starting with me, Norm? Um. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just want to, I want to so badly start with you, Mary. Oh, Norm, don't tease me. <laughs> tease me, that's not nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, 45? 45. Okay, and uh, Chris, what do you think? Uh, 52. 52. Okay, Denise? Okay, 50 even. 50 even. And uh, Jack Hart? Hmm, 51. 51. And uh, Jack Braintree? Uh, 47. And what do you think, Ed? Um, I'm going to go with Denise and say 50. 50. 50 is a good guess because that's exactly how old he is today. Uh -huh. And also, you both are now tied three apiece. Uh oh. Hey. <laughs> and you're okay. Lenny Dix Dextra. Dextra? Huh? Dykstra? Dykstra. Dykstra. Dykstra, the, yeah. the basketball player. A baseball player, rather. I'm sorry. But, uh, baseball player born at Santa Ana, California. Leonard Kyle Dykstra. Hmm. Born on this day, February 10th. Uh, Denise, what do you think? Oh, thanks a lot, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still playing? Can you give me that clue? Uh, well, I'll give you the... I, I, I believe he still is, or if he's not, he hasn't been out of it long. He's, yeah. he's of an age where he could very well be playing. He was a, he was a pitcher, right? Yeah, I've heard the name, but... Uh, you know, I don't know. It just says baseball player. Oh, okay. I should know so it that. it could be anything. I know One of nine positions, I suppose. I could be say... Uh, yeah, I might as well do this. I'll do this just for you, Norm. 39. Uh, you know, you're not doing me <laughs> any big favor. <laughs> you and I have to go into my imitation of you-know-who, you see. You know. Lenny Dykstra, 39. Oh, I'm you. Okay. Mary, what do you think? I'm sorry. Oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. I'm thinking. How old is our friend Lenny? And when did we last have him over for dinner? You know. Here's a guy who's been dead for 20 years, and people still get a kick out of it, even a bad imitation of him. Isn't that something? You think 20 years from now, if I should die on the way home today, for example, would people imitate me in the oh, year yeah. 2000? Oh, yeah. the people, will be, people will be reviving the birthday game all across the country. <laughs> <laughs> birthday game nostalgia. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, Mary, how old is Lenny Dykstra, anyway? Uh, 37. 37. Okay. And uh, Jack Braintree? I'll say 34. 34. And uh, what do you think, Chris? I'm going with 37. 37. Okay. And uh, Ed? 35. 35. And what do you think, Jack? You know, they'll be asking questions on quiz shows years from now. And what old-time comedian <laughs> did Norm Nathan <laughs> imitate in the year, you know, 2100 and something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, let me think. Um, I would say he is uh, 37. 37. And Alec, Alec, uh, 
Alec Trebek. Alec Trebek, yeah, yeah. will be conducting the program, and yeah. he'll say, <clears throat> Now we have a few categories. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be leaning on his walker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. For, uh, for a thousand clapnicks and yeah. uh, whatever the money monetary is. No, with inflation, it'll be for uh, three million. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> We have biblical characters, <laughs> musical comedy stars. We have capitals of foreign nations. <laughs> birthday game, birthday game, birthday game. Yes. Yeah. and uh, despots, world despots. <laughs> Okay, you're wondering who won this last round, aren't you? <laughs> Lenny Dykstra is 33 years old today, mm. so I would say the Jack Jack Braintree. Mm. Uh, uh, one man, he said 34. Oh. Wait, hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. He was the closest. Nobody said 32. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go. That was the first birthday that was younger than me. <laughs> You're really self conscious. Are you pretty self conscious about your age? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Ooh, okay. Well, how old are you? 38. Oh, 38 is a nice age. Oh, that is a good age. I think I remember when I was 38. <laughs> oh, time ago. <laughs> anyway, Denise has three, and so does uh, Ed, and two from Jack Braintree, and uh, still... We're having her, a party over here. We're yeah, not. that's right. You haven't got time to... <laughs> we're, we're just enjoying ourselves. <laughs> okay. How about Laura Dern, who's the... Was it Bruce? Is that her father's name? Yeah. Dern. yeah. Bruce Dern, who's a fine actor, and she's a fine actress also. Uh, I can't think of movies she's been in, but she's been in well, a number of Well, she was in them. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. She, she was, was in Wild at Heart. Wild at Heart. Wild at Heart. That was the one with... Uh, with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. With the Something David Lynch movie. Right. Something about Rose, uh, the Wildwood Rose, or second... Yes, Rose. that was that was uh, with... Uh, with her mother, Diane Lamb. Yes, oh, yeah. and also, yeah. also the great character actor whose first movie... Uh, was the, uh, oh, jeez, it's so awful. I have a memory like I have it since. It's really just falling apart. I've got to give up those banana splits. I think it's doing something <laughs> to my entire body. <laughs> maybe I could have it without the chocolate sauce, though. So maybe that'd be all right. No, Robert, du Robert Duval. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, To Kill a... To Kill a Mockingbird was the first movie. Remember, oh, it was in, oh, yeah, he was he, the, he was he, yeah, that's, that's right. right. He, he that's was the hermit, and he was also in the uh, in that movie you were trying to think of with uh, Laura Dern. Oh, the roses are roses. Uh, roses in the title. I forget the rest. It was quite a, a wild quite wandering, a good movie. wild rose, wild, wandering rose, rambling rose. Rambling was, Ramble, rose. was that it? Rambling yeah. rose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Laura Dern. Anyway, today is her birthday. And uh, let's start with you, Ed. What do you think? Uh, I think she's 28. 28. Okay. And uh, Jack Hart, what do you think? Uh, well, how old is Bruce Dern? Uh, I don't know. I'm figuring out how to look it up. I could, I could look it up if you think it would help you a lot. Um... Bruce? I'm trying to think. He was just on. He was just on uh, something not too long ago. He was on something not too long ago. That's kind of a general <laughs> statement you can get away with here in this program. We don't ask for details about anything. No. I don't remember him. He was on something I think uh, some time ago. I guess. <laughs> That's correct. You win the big prize. <laughs> I'm looking up. Uh, I'm looking up Bruce Dern. I want to. Yeah, he's in here. He's born on June, June fourth. I'll tell. I'll even tell you how old he is. That's the kind of guy I am. Even mm -hmm. though uh, Ed Ed uh, Leclerc is already gone, that is already guessed. Let's see the fourth. Bruce Dern is uh, was uh, will be. Uh, he'll be sixty. He's fifty nine now. He's fifty nine. Fifty nine. Yeah. Be sixty in June. If that Scott helps you guess his daughter. What's that? What's that? I'm uh, what did you say? I said, but did he start early or did he start late? He's still going That's up. gee, that's that's the right. that's the mystery of this whole thing. I see. That's what makes this game America's most <laughs> talked about <laughs> game show. Uh, Second only to Wheel of Fortune mm -hmm. and Jeopardy, <laughs> or maybe third only to those two. <laughs> Never been good at math either. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Norm, on the video version, will you have Marilyn reveal the birthdays like Vanna turns around the left? Oh, yeah, she'll, she'll do the same thing. Yes, that's correct. She'll be turning ages. Yeah, she'll, she'll be in a walker <laughs> then, too. Yeah. That'd be nice to... <laughs> <laughs> How come we don't like guess uh, guess like the the weight and shirt size as long while we're at it? Well, if you'd like to do that, you can get extra points for that. <laughs> Meantime, how old do you think Laura Dern? Oh, Laura Dern, thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay, and uh, Mary, what do you think? Um, yes, thirty-two. Thirty-two, also okay. And Denise? <laughs> I was going to say thirty-two. It's a popular age. <laughs> Thirty-two, okay. And uh, Chris, uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, and uh, Jack, brain, the brain tree Jack, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine is exactly right. Hey, Ooh. you know what that means? It means we got a three-way tie now. Oh wow! Wow. Jack, brain tree, Denise, and uh, and Ed. Oh, and we have, okay, and, and no. you have another three-way tie the other way, right? <laughs> yeah. For second place. <laughs> That's right. A, a, a tie zero, it's zero, and zero. Here. Wow. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's, here's about the last thing I got. Oh. A death of a salesman, which, has it opened yet or will be opening with Hal Holbrook? It next, will be opening soon. Yeah, okay. Next couple of weeks. Okay, this is, the, this is an anniversary date for that. Oh, oh. wow. Hmm. Uh, for the show, the Arthur Miller play. It was on February 10th. That uh, the play Death of a Salesman opened on Broadway's <laughs> Morasco Theater with Lee J. Cobb in the role of Willie Loman. That's the role, obviously, that uh, mm. uh, that Hal Holbrook will be playing, and Mildred Dunnick as his wife Max. No, his wife's name was Linda. I just did that for a humorous <laughs> touch. <laughs> Didn't seem too terribly humorous, did it? Okay, what year was that? That uh, that uh, Death of a Salesman opened on Broadway. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Okay, let's start with you, Denise. What do you think? Okay, the big question is, is it before Marilyn Monroe or after Marilyn Monroe? Did he write it because he was depressed mm -hmm. over Marilyn, or did he write it? No, he, wrote, he ro actually wrote a play based upon Marilyn Monroe, which he wrote later on. Yeah. After his marriage pretty well fizzled, and, and uh, that, that didn't go too well, and I can't even think of the title of that play. No, I'm trying to think if this one was before Marilyn or after Marilyn, or whether... He was famous because of Death of a Salesman, and that's how he met Marilyn. Oh, Ooh, boy. Uh, yeah. See, I could tell you, but I think... Famous. He was almost famous. He should have been famous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I'll say 1956. 1956. Okay, what do you think, Mary? What year was that, the opening of uh, Death of a Salesman? Um, um, Fifty-seven. Uh, Nineteen fifty-seven. No, eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. You should be sorry because this is a serious program. It's a serious I have to program. My record. I can't make a point now, Nora. No, but to try to inject <laughs> some silly bit of humor into this program <laughs> is really disgraceful. Sorry. It's disgusting. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Jack Braintree, what do you think? What year was Death of a Salesman? And, of course, uh, ha Dustin Hoffman uh, was in it when a Broadway version of it, uh, what, two, three years ago, something like that? Yeah. It was, it was just on recently. Yeah, yeah the uh, video. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Video, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was recorded on. also. Yeah. yeah. It was recorded at the theater. Yeah, I believe so. From a live performance, yeah. yeah. Well, this was, a, I think this was specifically made for TV, the, uh, this particular. Yeah, it was on the... And the movie, the movie version of Death of Salesman, who was, that was that Lee J. Cobb uh, also? Lee J. Cobb, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Also on that. Hmm. That was such a sad, oh. such a sad play. Yeah, it's yeah. so nice to know it opened on my birthday, too. <laughs> on February, that's right, February 10th. Yeah, it did not leave you happy by the end. No. No, I mean, you felt this poor soul with his suitcase. and Actually, salesmen like that are on the road always been depicted in a very sad way. Maybe in the next hour, some some salesman. Some happy who, salesman. Will yeah, be happy called. salesman. Salesman who lug big, big suitcases around with their samples in it can call and say, Well, this is really a great life. I just walk on the balls of my feet. I'm so excited. Well, that's Ooh, the, what was that movie with John Candy? 
uh, trains, planes, and automobiles. He oh, was right. a salesman yeah. that put on the bold front, but he was really kind of the sad, miserable. Was he? Mm -hmm. By the time it got to the end, yeah. There was a Neil Simon play. <clears throat> what was that one? Where? Uh, Neil Simon. Uh, yeah, one of the Neil Simon play. One of the characters in it is also a salesman isn't like it, that. Isn't that um oh 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 um Lost in Yonkers the the song? Yeah, I think I think it is Lost yeah. in Yonkers. Yes. Yeah. So yes. that was one of his sadder plays. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. and it was the same thing. The guy would go out with his sample to the case and come back and be beat, beat, beat and unhappy. That must you, you think know that, what I think it is? Yeah. Um, I think oh, if you look at a lot of those characters, they were depicted right after World War II in the 40s and 50s before uh, faxes, computers, modems, and I don't think they were able to communicate with their loved ones as easily. And uh, I think nowadays where you can call people from the road and be in touch a lot closer and people are much more mobile, I don't think it's quite the same. Yeah, but you're still moving. You're still, you're still sort of dragging and, and yeah. sort of schlepping along. Oh, boy, it's uh, just awful. Okay, Jack, Jack Braintree, what do you think? What year was uh, Death of a Salesman on Broadway? I already said 1961. Oh, 1961, okay. Chris, what do you think? 1953. 1953. And Ed? 1953. 1953. And uh, Jack? Gotta say 53. Uh-oh. 1953, <laughs> okay. Actually, it was 1949. Oh, my. Oh, 1949, yeah. That was way before Marilyn. Yes, it was. It was. That was his first... First big His play, first major it? play, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we've broken the tie. Let me see. Yeah, Wait no, a minute. The, yeah, Ed. Chris and yeah, Ed, Ed said oh. 53, which is the closest. Uh, oh, and also uh, Jack. Uh, I was fascinated by the play. And the prop master, uh, who, of course, was in charge of preparing absolutely everything. As you know, the last scene is at the cemetery. Mm. And uh, the wife is standing over the poor salesman's grave. And he ordered flowers to be delivered to the theater every afternoon because they knew that someone in the audience, where it was upstage, uh, that someone in the audience would take the flowers as a souvenir. And from the first night of the show, the people left the theater and no one went near the flowers. Mm -hmm. After a week's run, they replaced them with plastic flowers because they knew that uh, the audience attitude was not going to change and they never had to put fresh flowers for the grave each night. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's an interesting story. You know, you know, we only got about a half a minute or so left, but what was it he sold? Do you remember? He sold anything and everything. He had a sample case. Oh, but, and he but, sold household goods, he sold uh, fabrics, he sold everything. Oh, okay. Right. The that's only it, thing that's he interesting. sold nothing. That's and interesting. Because he had no support at home. Yeah, and I remember the scene where his son visits him at his hotel room and he's entertaining a woman mm -hmm. there, and the son just could not understand that. And he was trying to, it was such a sad scene, he was pleading with him to understand that how lonely the job was he had. He just looking for yeah. companionship. Anyway, it's sad, sad play. Hey, thank you very much, all of you, for playing the game with us. I appreciate it. Denise? Norm, can you keep me on a second? I want to tell, can I just tell you something briefly off the air? If that's okay. Yeah, okay, hold on. Uh, Mary, thank you very much, Mary. <laughs> bye, Norm. Bye-bye, Mary, and bye-bye, Jack Braintree. Pleasure all to right. have you with us. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. And you too, Chris. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, and... Uh, uh, Jack Hart will be listening to, for you in a few minutes. Oh, well, he certainly will. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, Jack. Okay, news time. The, the vineyards. See, I thought you were talking about Indians. Yeah, Sorry. the little little big man, of course, was the Dustin Hoffman movie. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, which was quite a different thing. Anyway. Hey, Manny, thanks a lot for calling. I'm sorry you didn't win. No problem. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's just take a break for a couple, couple of commercials, and then uh, we'll be right back and, and play the... Ann, you're on WBZ. Hi. Hi, Norm. Hi, Bob. Hello, Ann. Here's your first question. What is the capital and largest city of Egypt? 
population of about 6.2 million that city has. Cairo? Cairo, that's correct. Very big city. Uh, Cairo has uh, as many people as does uh, the whole of Massachusetts. Second question. What woman, lover of Julius Caesar and wife of Mark Antony, became queen of ancient Egypt in 51 B.C.? Cleopatra? Cleopatra, right. And uh, I think they both committed suicide right after the Battle of Atrium. Disastrous outcome for them. And finally, here's a game winner for you. Name the president of Egypt, the 1978 Nobel Peace Prize winner, who was assassinated by a mund- Muslim fundamentalist in 1981. Was it Anwar Sadat? Good. Anwar al-Sadat. Very good. Excellent, Ann. Yeah, well, we're looks like we may go out on a winning note here, Norm. I guess so, yeah. But yeah. uh, certainly that was a winning note, and congratulations, Ann. Thank you. Okay, here's, uh, here's let's see, this George is uh, in Roslindale. Hi, George, you're on WBZ with Bob. Yes, good morning, this is George in Roslindale. Okay, George, your first question. What is the city, what city is the capital and second largest city in Tennessee? You got me there. Okay, thanks for trying anyway, George. Uh, George sounded like he was not quite with it. Maybe it was my imagination. Okay. Anyway, we'll go to Sam in uh, Medford. Sam, you're on WBZ. Hi. Hi, Sam. Okay. We'll stick with with Tennessee. Important things happened there. In in Memphis, Tennessee, in 1968, again, it was in April. It was April 4th, 1968. What famous civil rights leader was assassinated at age 39? Martin Luther King? Martin Luther King, that's right. As he was leaning over the balcony chatting with Jesse Jackson, he was shot. Uh, Second question. Located near Nashville, the Hermitage was home to what U.S. president who was nicknamed Old Hickory? Taylor. Pardon? Taylor. No, Old Hickory. Remember the Battle of New Orleans? Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Andy Jackson, his Tennessee volunteers, did the British in at the Battle of New Orleans. Okay. Okay, thanks for calling, Sam. Hey, here's my friend Fred, who's up in Maine. How you doing, Fred? Oh, I'm not doing too bad, Norman. You? Good, thank you. I've done good on the questions so far here. Now, let's see if I can do it when I'm live. Okay. okay. This is a different friend than I thought you were when I said you my friend, but you'll, you'll be my friend too. What the uh, I hope so. After all these years. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fred. Yeah. One half of the people in Alaska live in this city. What is the most populous Anchorage. city in Alaska? Would that be? Well, j- just give me a, a city in Alaska that you think is the most populous. I, I, I'm assuming Anchorage. Anchorage is very good. Okay. Second question. In what year did an earthquake, 8.3 on the Richter scale, kill 131 people and devastate Anchorage, Alaska? Was that 1906? No. 1964? Or 1988? 64. 64 is correct. Here's the game winner for you. Okay. Located in South Central Alaska, what is the name of the highest peak in North America? McKinley. Mount McKinley. Very, very good. It has another Congratulations. Name. You won. I forget what it is. You came, you came through brilliantly, Fred. Thank you. Okay. Here's Keith, and uh, we'll take the information from you so we can get our game out to you, and uh, we'll talk with John. In uh, Andover. Hi, John. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, John. In in 1847, who led the Mormons to the Salt Lake Valley and later became the first governor of Utah? Uh, Smith. Pardon? Smith. Well, Joseph Smith started, but I believe Smith was killed in... uh, uh, well, uh, Missouri, and then Brigham Young took him on out. Yeah. yeah, hey, nice try, John. I'm sorry. 
I think most people probably would have said the gave given that same answer. Mm -hmm. We'll go to. Uh, oh, oh, this is Beth, I think, who's making funny noises there, there in Lynn. Beth, you're on WBZ, Beth. Uh, Beth. Beth, turn off your radio. Come on. Oh, Beth, the Beth, I guess, got cold feet or something. We'll go instead. We'll go to Spencer in Cambridge. Hi, Spencer. You're on WBZ. How you doing? Good, thanks. Hello, Spencer. Yeah, hi. Your first question. One of the greatest achievements in English literature is the development of what kind of story? Would that be the magazine, the novel, or the scientific story? The novel. The novel is correct. Second question. Novels which emerged as a literary form in the 1700s are what type of work? Are they fiction? Poetic or scientific? Fiction. Fiction is correct. And your final, your game winner. Who wrote A Christmas Carol? Oliver Twist, The Pickwick Papers, David Copperfield. Charles Dickens. Pardon? Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Very good. Thank hey, you. Congratulations. That's two in a row. Yeah, you've, you've won a game, Spencer. Thank you very much. Okay, hang in there and talk to Keith. As we go, we'll go to up to Worcester. And uh, Scott, you're on uh, WBZ. Nice to have you with us. Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. Could Good. you turn your radio down, Scott? Yeah, it's not mine, but I'll turn it down. Go ahead. Scott, okay, you... Scott. Who was king of France when the French Revolution began in 1789? Louis XIV. Very good. Mm. King Louis the Fourteenth and his wife were found guilty of treason, and how were they executed? With the uh, newly invented guillotine. Right. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, what was the name of his beautiful and extravagant wife? <laughs> the woman that uh, let them eat uh, cake, Marie Antoinette. Excellent. Boy, you seem quite knowledgeable about that. Well, you know, I've gotten almost every one of your questions. I was just hoping that uh, when you got me that I'd get them all, but I guess well, I did. You did, and you made it seem so easy. Yeah, uh, maybe, well, European history I'm pretty good at. Really? Well, maybe maybe we should disqualify him, Norm, since he's <laughs> so good at this. Oh, yeah. You want to make up new rules of, yeah. right in the middle of the game. <laughs> hey, hang in there, Scott, and, uh, and, and uh, talk to Keith, and congratulations. And I think that's all we got time for because we got news coming up in a couple of minutes. That's and, right. And it's always it's always fun to talk with you, Bob. I really appreciate the, you coming on the show with us. Yeah, well, it's always a good time. And we and we'll perhaps we'll talk again a little bit later on when the uh, the game that you're working on right now comes. Yeah, out. that that'll be uh, quite interesting. M maybe not so quite as heavy on the educational aspect, but it's fun. Of course, the all of these are fun. All the fun's the geography. That's, that's the whole point. That's the idea. Geography facts and pastimes, times of the world, info guess, info, info, invention, invention. All, all fun. It's always fun to have you, and I wish you, I uh, hope you have a nice spring and summer, and we'll talk to you again later on. Then. Okay, Norm, thanks. Okay, Bob. Bye-bye now. That was Bob Hernandez, who's uh, always a joy to have on the show, and I appreciate all those of you who called. I'm sorry you all couldn't get through. The Dumb Birthday Game, in perpetuity, will be America's most talked about game show. Did you know that the Mark Spitz toaster could make seven slices at a time? All perfectly golden brown. Thank you. I've been waiting to use that one all week. See you next time. Closing the vault 